8th of May, 1905. I dreamt that we slowly starved, lost out in the skies. There was a rotting sun, and the stars were vanishing. Welcome back to Sunless Skies. Before I continue, there's quite a bit I want to go over. First thing is, remember back to the beginning of the game when Captain Whitlock was dying as we were coming out of the Blue Kingdom relay? Remember all the strange descriptions of what was ailing them? Talk of like ash coming out of their mouth and blue flame, I think, dancing on their tongue. Things like that. It sounded like they were burning up, like from the inside or something, in a very weird, magical way. Well, I had no idea what that was, but somebody commented on a video and suggested something from the original Sunless Seas that actually might be what they were suffering from. And I didn't remember this at all, but it kind of came back to me when I looked at this. Uh, so this is going to be, I think, pretty minor spoilers for the original Sunless Seas. Uh, but this is one of the officers that you can get, the Brisk Campaigner. You might remember them. I remember their portrait. So... There's a bunch of events that can happen, starting with the Brisk Campaigner collapses. That'll just happen randomly, I think, at some point. And just to show you some examples of what would happen if we asked them a question. Demanded answer. Is she ill? What has she brought aboard your ship? And then the answer, it's called Animescence. In the Elder Continent, there is a flame that burns souls. My soul caught a light. It only smolders. Souls burn long and slow. But long before it is consumed, it will sizzle my brain and bake my heart. No, it's not dangerous to anyone else. Until I die. You should give my body to the sea when that happens. What's the danger when they do die? I don't know. But yeah, animescence. A flame that caught their soul alight and they've been burning slowly. So there's talk of heat and sizzling. And then later on with the event, the campaigner is dying. There's an option to try to give them a treatment. And look at this description here. A raindrop in a furnace. It is no good. The scouring heat of her mouth puffs the medicines to vapor the moment they leave the pipette. The cooling paste dries and cracks as soon as you apply it to her skin. So, it doesn't mention the exact symptoms that we heard Whitlock had, it didn't mention literal flame in their mouth or ash coming out, but it's, I mean, it sounds so familiar, right? Burning up, quite literally, from within, slowly, over time, and yeah, I'm pretty sure Captain Whitlock had animescence. Although I feel like they maybe died a lot quicker from it than the Presque Campaigner did. I mean, for them, for the Campaigner, it took months, maybe years, slowly simmering, but... For Whitlock, I mean, I don't know exactly how long it was, but I feel like no more than maybe a week or two. Because we went, they went, they took us, they were the captain at the time. They took us to the Blue Kingdom, and then I don't know exactly how long we were there, but I feel like not very long before we were chased out by the authorities. And then as soon as we got out, back to the Reach, we instantly went to... New Winchester, so there's not, I don't feel like there's a lot of time there for them to be sick for months or years. Certainly not years. Okay, well that's the first order of business. Second order of business, somebody told me how to level up. Thank you very much. I didn't know you could level up. Apparently you click on your portrait down here. So, we have, I think it said two points out here. Level, character points two. A moment of reflection. Choose a facet. Grow stronger. These look interesting. That one looks very bloody. So what exactly do they do? Just read this. Scarred. You came close that day to death. It left its mark. What was it that nearly killed you? Okay, so you get to choose, like, was it an attempt on my life or an engine accident? And then gives me a couple stats. Looks like iron is the primary one, and then... Yeah, with all of these, you get to choose between two secondary skills. Okay, let me find a good one. These are really interesting. I really love the way they did 
did this. So you're not just increasing a stat because you have a character point and you just press like plus one on this stat and you get it and that's that's it. Instead, you actually grow by doing story stuff like you're building your character. You're building your character's past, the things they've been through to grow your character. It's very cool. There is one of them, by the way, that actually doesn't have two sub-selections, just one. Um, and this requires... Oh no, this doesn't require villainy. That gives me villainy plus one. I was thinking maybe it was like a special one. Some of these things can only happen if you're a certain type of person. Um, I'm going to go with the Liberation of Night. This one's very interesting. You began to hear of a secret sect or philosophy among the most extreme anarchist cells, the Liberation of Night. The Liberation advocated revolt not only on Earth, but in Heaven. It claimed light was law, and that we, be won't, we would only be free in the dark. When a masked fanatic tried to convert you, how did you respond? Okay, the first option, which I'm not going to go with. Your eyes were opened. No one will be free until the stars, greatest of all tyrants, are shaken from their thrones. Existence itself is a chain. That's interesting. It doesn't fit with my character, so I'm definitely not going to go with that. But this mention of the liberation of night makes me think, could they be responsible for the stars dying? Remember the encoded letter, the stars are dying, plus the thing we saw in our, uh, dream. Yes, that was definitely a dream, where a star just winked out of existence. Maybe they're not dying natural deaths. Yes, that is a very extreme anarchist cell, and I thought that was particularly interesting because I'm a revolutionary, right? So I would definitely be the sort of person that would hear about anarchist cells and things like that. But yeah, we did the second thing, which is going to give us five veils and three iron. And a moment of inspiration. You sent him packing, his words smacked of religion. Which, as the very Reverend Kingsley said, is too often an opium dose for keeping beasts of burden patient while they're being overloaded. Past the liberation of night. You rejected the liberation of night. Revolution is pragmatic and begins in the streets. Who would you be in the dark? It's a scary thought. Everything being dark, all the stars dead. Okay, so we had to choose from the remaining ones. Being a revolutionary, Elizabeth is not unused to spending time in a prison for things they've done. So, we spent a spell in prison. The judge, stony-faced, condemned you to New Newgate, the stalactite prison of old London. Its dark was thick as tar, its cells were small as pantries. How did you spend your days there? You served your time quietly. You notched each dismal day onto the cell wall. You steered clear of the monsters and the meek they preyed upon. You dreamed of the day of your release. Five veils and three hearts. A brush with the law. Yes, thank you very much for telling me about how to level up before it got too bad. I mean, I, I was worried I was missing, I don't know, like, <laughs> maybe if you level up you'll get like a birthday present and get tons of money. But I wasn't missing anything huge. Those stat boosts are, are quite nice, but they're not going to like make or break anything that I did when I had forgotten to use it. Probably. I mean, they could have, but I don't think that was that big of a deal. Right, so we are at Kirillin. There's a lot left to do here. We've already ousted that, I don't remember their name, but the devil that was stealing souls. We've gotten that one person out of the Gaslight Terrace. Might as well go back here, just see if there's anything new. Gain a penance, or go back. Alright, let's go back. I don't want to gain any penances or anything like that at the moment. I just want to see if there's anybody here that I could try to rescue or talk with. Right, I left the ritual... Uh, or rather, I left the Bell Garden, which means I have to do the Ritual Purification to get back there again, and I have a 39% chance of success. Sure. Nice. 
Let's go there then. And this time, let's talk to everybody so I don't lose everything when I leave. Yeah, there's the penitent nurse, which I never talked with. She huddles in the corner, her face trapped in a grimace. She's huddled in a corner with cotton stuffed into her ears. Let's attempt to communicate. It's too loud to speak, certainly. You communicate in writing. She has been within the sound of the bells for 40 days. The clangor is starting to disrupt her mind. She begs you will help her, and out of your kindness, pay part of her penance for her. She would do the same for you. She is a very kind and forgiving soul. To convince you of this point, she scribbles down assurances, compliments, and a sketch of herself, ministering to a leprous child. I will help you, yes. Deprivation 5, or 1 deprivation and penance ordeal. Well, we're going to need deprivation regardless, so we might as well get one, right? Try to get one. 15% <laughs> chance of success. Austerity, absence, and lack. These are the devil-recommended treatments for those who live within the sound of the bells. Oh, you gain terror when you fail. That makes sense. A night soil man paid bills two months after they were due. In order to correct these flaws, he's following a discipline of fasting and abstinence on every day except seven Sundays. As for your replenishment, does not bear speaking of. I guess I'll just keep trying. Ah, same thing, right? Oh no, these are actually, they're different. Um, a shop girl from a shoe store makes a pastime of composing limericks and employs puns in casual conversation. As a corrective, she may speak no adjectives and is restricted to nouns of Roman derivation. <laughs> Jesus. All right, I'm going to I'm going to keep trying. A volunteer doctor makes a pastime of comp Wait. Oh, the, hmm. So I think these might be composed kind of like modularly. There's some similarities here, but it's not all the same. A volunteer doctor makes a pastime of composing limericks and employs puns in casual conversation. As punishment, she consumes only food that has first been soaked for 30 hours in vinegar. That sounds horrible, depending on how absorbent the food was. Yeah, so it looks like it's modular. I think it switches out probably the person, in this case a volunteer doctor. Um, also, the thing that they do is separate. And then the punishment is also separate. So I think it's like three different things that they pull from a list of. Come on. 20% isn't that bad. It's fine. But still. A housemaid was a reckless insomniac. In order to correct these flaws, she's been given a regimen of bowing each time the seventh bell rings its change. Try a couple more times. She... <laughs> A kindly priest suffers from an unaccountable peckishness. For the penitent's own good, he may only wear clothing of undyed linen and nettle flax. Okay, I've tried six times. A surgeon specializing in nasal complaints kept a pickled human hand in a jar on the shelf. For the penitent's own good, he must go without water, tea, or beer. Pretty creepy. Pickled hand for a doctor? Not good. Oh, finally. <laughs> a janitor wore unchanging socks of advanced putrefaction. <laughs> As punishment, she wears a blindfold at all times. I trust you see, remarks the supervising deviless, why self-restraint is needed. <laughs> Change your damn socks. Okay. We have that. Now, I need a penance ordeal. Uh, whoops. Let the nurse be. Let's leave. Deprivation, shift of perspective. Here is ordeal. Visit the stunted grove at the center of Carillon, a half-height grove of black thorn bushes. 
There's no real gate, but not much of a wall either. There's only a low stone barrier, perhaps a foot tall, easy to step over. The thorn bushes grow thorns an inch or more long. There are paths between them, but it is hard to pass by without tearing one's clothes. The devils who work here have scratches on their forearms, though they do not seem to mind. There's not a single comfortable place to sit. Ah, oh, requires iron for this. I have a slightly better chance at that, but it's still real bad. Professional Penitent. She is seated on a stool eating vast quantities of sorbet. <laughs> she collects penance for other people. Let's speak with them. It's a slow process, but the quality is better than the indulgence penance one may buy from the presiding deviless. The penitent is seated on a stool eating from an enormous barrel of violet sorbet. There's enough to supply a carnival. The penitent's lips are blue, her fingers are sticky, there are purple smears on her frock. Wasps are taking an interest in the side of her face. <laughs> when you come over, she puts down her spoon long enough to greet you. I'm here on behalf of a viscountess who doesn't love her children. She's waiting back in London for me to deliver her penance. Pointedly, the supervising devil sets another long-handled spoon at her elbow. So is eating lots and lots of sorbet their penance? So, what do you need? Of course, they always need one of the thing from where they were from. Oh, and I already have the deprivation, so I just need one penance ordeal. Thirty percent terror. That's fine. That's not fine. A handsome man strangled any sensation of love or attraction. For the penitent's own good, he's been made to sit at the top of a tall pole. Fuck. Forty percent. Mmm. Same thing with the sensation of love or attraction. But, this time, they've been shackled at one side of the garden on the grounds of being too dangerous. I'm going to try one more time. Okay. A lady admires the line of a good horse only when it is on its way to the glue factory. The devils disapprove. To repair these defects, she has been swaddled very tightly in bandages like a small baby. <laughs> That's so silly. Okay. Let's try something else that I'm better at. The wall is lower from this side. It's even easier to leave than to enter because the ground is uneven. So, Gaslight Terrace done. Bell Garden, all good. Checkerboard Garden. Stunted Grove is done. Insatiable Roses. Oh, a couple of these require special things to go into, but we can still do the Garden of Insatiable Roses and Checkerboard Garden. I think I haven't been here. I... Hmm. No, I did go here at one point, but did I talk to anyone? Right, the rubbery man. I did speak with them, but I didn't save them, obviously. What do you need? One enlightenment and one shift of perspective. 63% chance of success, that I will take. A woman who just left the game pried into biological questions that aren't meant for people to know. To improve the quality of her soul, she has been stripped of garments and possessions and given an entirely new name. The supervising devil is distracted by the play on the chessboard. Now I just need a Penance of Enlightenment over at the Gaslight Terrace. 39% chance of success... Uh, let's look at this. You can reduce terror by discovering new ports, returning to major ports like London or New Winchester, and through special opportunities at ports you've been to before. Yeah. I remember there were things that you could do that'd be good for your crew, like... In Sunless Sea, I mean. Things like 
I don't know, buy your crew like a bunch of rounds at a at a tavern or something like that to improve the mood and things of that sort. A glass-eyed nanny maintains a collection of antique and modern straight-edged implements and has published a monograph on the topic. As punishment, she's having an arm removed at the elbow. I... I... How is it bad to collect antique and modern straight-edged implements? I'm not even sure what a straight-edged implement is, but... What the fuck? That's really disturbing, actually. Um, like all the punishments we've seen so far, all the ways of of uh, you know experiencing discomfort and going through something bad to try to gain penance, everything has been temporary. You know, f physically temporary. Nothing's been permanent. But having an arm removed at the elbow, I mean, that's not going to grow back. A chinless matriarch wrote a masterful satire, but kept it in a desk drawer for fear of its reception. To repair these defects, she's being forced to wear a necklace of rats. I hope the rats died natural deaths. Okay, I'm at 55%, so I really should stop, but I'm not going to. A man in naval uniform keeps an account book of all pennies given to urchins. Until the penitent recovers from this inclination, he has been given a viper in a velvet sack and told to keep it from squirming. <laughs> okay, back to the rubbery man. Let's help them out. Elevation of a rubbery man. What would such a person need? Perhaps understanding cut with ambition. Whoa. Gain 500 experience, a vision of heavens. I now have a rubbery penitent. They're on board. They're not an officer, are they? I don't think so. Enlightenment for a start. Conversation for a chaser. He consumes both. Tentacles are involved in the twitching of excessively mobile... Uh, would one call those lips? But then, what a transformation. His features smooth and flatten. His tentacles retract. From a distance, one might take him for a human gentleman with an especially prominent brow. He assesses you. Then, no thanks, no comment, not even the wave of a tentacle. What an ingrate. He takes up someone's freshly discarded crozier. As a bishop, he joins the game in play. Oh, I... Hmm. I think I took that sound as like they just got on board, but no, we met them, we assisted them, but they didn't, they're not coming with us. How did we get a vision of the heavens from that? Is it because they got all nice and smooth? <laughs> I don't know what just happened. But anyway, we have leveled up again, and I don't think I'm going to risk anything more for more terror. 55 is just about my max. You know what? What the heck? Let's do the last one. Let's visit the Garden of Insatiable Roses. Only penitents with stained souls may visit the garden. The path runs around the side of Carillon to an area that cannot be seen at all from the center. It's a narrow and unassuming path, almost overgrown, and the ground underfoot is soft earth. Ooh, this one's very different from the others. It's not like the typical formula, talk to someone, try to gain penance, or leave. Explore the undergrowth, read the footprints, or identify that scent. Let's explore the undergrowth as you go. Curiosity is what brought you here. You lift aside a canopy of leaves alongside the path. Underneath, white maggots are eating a sigil of warding into a fallen peach. Ew. So the, the maggots are actually drawing the sigil into the peach by where they've eaten. By the fence, there is a composting pile. 
Thousands of worms are reducing to mulch a heap of unacceptable book matter. Most of the books were confiscated from penitents. Now and then the compost catches fire and a supervising devil has to put it out. But this fertilizer explains the aggression of the plants that grow here. Okay, now it's back to the typical formula. Excess, 10% chance of success, nope. So I've noticed something really bizarre. I think I can actually make money here in a really strange way. So there's two different shops, the Bazaar and Grammaries. Let me show you the Bazaar first. So this is where I can turn in my pending prospects, and I have one for here. They want Nectar for Kirillin. The Devils of Kirillin are experimenting with a new penance involving close harmony singing. You might remember it at this point. Five Gores of Chorister Nectar, Panacea by Opera Singers, Actors with Extensive Monologues, etc, etc. So they're going to pay 240 for each Gourd of Chorister Nectar. Now, if we go over to Grimmeries, we can buy Gourds of Chorister Nectar for 120 coins. That seems like that is a bug. It doesn't seem like that should be that way. I mean, if a place wants something and then a place across the street sells it for literally half the price, I mean, that doesn't make a lot of sense, right? But, uh... I'll be damned if I don't need the money. The awkward thing, though, is that I can't actually afford a single gourd of Corister Nectar, so I'm going to have to sell my supplies. I need... 40? That's not going to be enough. I think I need to sell three. And then I can buy one. And then I can go over to the bazaar. And now I have 250, so I can buy two of these. This is really weird. This is really weird, wow. Uh, they want two more. Oh, advice for captains. Now that you've saved some money, it might make sense to buy some locomotive equipment from Abraham's Engineering. If you have at least 1,500 sovereigns, you could even buy a new locomotive from the Wolvesy Engine Yard. Yeah, this money's going straight to supplies. I feel like I'm cheating. All right. The presiding deviless takes her last gourd herself. Fabulous. We would hate the limitations of the penitent's vocal cords to obstruct their treatment. We prefer their confessions to at least be in tune. Gained an otherworldly artifact and 150 experience. So this place sells barrels of unseasoned hours. I don't know any place that wants this. Now is the time to trade. Now that I have enough money, I should start trading. Oops, sorry for hitting the microphone. Um, hmm. Okay, well, first thing, I need some more supplies. Four should be fine. Yeah, four's fine. So apparently whatever is Consider a bargain at the bazaar is always a really good deal compared to other places you get it, and they just don't sell very much of it, I think? Well, I don't see any limit on how many you can get. But this is probably a really good deal, so maybe I should just take them. A buoyant broker sells barrels full of geode-like hours, dug fresh from the shapely flanks of the Mother of Mountains by rugged but well-mannered prospectors, he cries. Put them to your ears, my dears, and hear them call. <laughs> Okay, I'll buy three. They're not that expensive. Now, let's level up again. Got a couple new ones. Looks like we get to choose how we grew up. Either we grew up on the smoggy streets, or we grew up in richer places. I'm gonna go with this richer one. You spent your youth in stuffy sitting rooms and chandeliered parlors. Hush, and you can still hear the delicate sound of silver spoons on china cups. You were not ungrateful, but your life was hedged by bounds of civility and expectation. You had to disobey sometimes to discover who you were. When you had to rebel, how did you do it? Secretly and occasionally. You wouldn't bring shame to your household. You kept your disobediences modest and discreet. No one was any the wiser. 
I think that's kind of interesting for someone who's a revolutionary to be from a really cushy upbringing. Because that isn't what I would expect. So we have 40 veils now? And 28 mirrors. Damn. We got some serious stats. Okay, well, we are entirely done here. And my hair... Hair? My terror is disturbingly high, so I think I maybe want to go back to New Winchester. Oh! Enemy up here. Didn't even take a single bit of damage. I'm getting pretty good at this. Gain hole. Your mirror skill will slightly affect how much you repair. Or loot the hold. Well, I'm going back to get repaired in just a second, so... Let's loot the hold. A clasped jewelry box. Something precious has been concealed. A sheaf of letters falls from a concealed compartment. The pages are rife with scandal. You now have one salon stewed gossip. I remember I needed this for something, but I don't remember what. On my way back, I sent my my bat out. Oh hey, Kentangri. And it found a question mark. Oh hey, is this new as well, or did I already go here? I think. This is new. This is not the question mark that I was talking about either. The homestead appears to be thriving. Family gathers outside to welcome you. Blue smoke coils from the chimney. Eat your fill, reduce your tear, and if you're starving, buy you some time. Ooh, reducing my tear would be good. Or I could trade a sky story for supplies. No, I need to reduce my tear. I did it by a good amount. I think like 10%. Sticky porridge and viney vegetables. Ah, don't hit it. Ah, damn it. It's chasing me, isn't it? Uh, I might be backing off. I'm going to ignore it for now. Ah, some space loot. One... Wait, what was that? Oh, it's a caddy of dried tea. As British as... Crinoline? Or Lord Elgin's Marbles? I've never heard of either of those. <laughs> I don't know if that's like an actual British thing people in general know, or if that's specific to Sunless Guys. I have no idea. Uh, but yeah, I could use a caddy of dried tea to throw a tea party on board my ship at Port Avon or something. One of the places that required me to gain more favor before I could explore it further. So that's good. It does take up a hold space though, which is annoying. I mean, it's just tea. Like, Jesus Christ. It's like 20 kilograms of tea. Ooh, we just got discontent. We last got this during our, uh, dream. <laughs> I guess our tear is 53%. I don't know what you need to trigger this, but it's pretty high. Right, so it's the same as before. Um, they see a star winking out. Couldn't say if a star had been there before. Oh, right, this time I actually have supplies, so I can dispense an additional ration of brandy to distract the crew and improve morale. Or make a joke of it. 18% chance of success, set a watch on the stars. 30% chance of success, I'm just going to use some supplies, that's fine. Terror's been reduced, nice. The prospect of brandy provokes ragged cheer. Soon the crew have rosy faces and broad smiles. Your locomotive resounds to a lusty, if approximate, rendition of how the Zaylers lost their Zs. No one looks out of the windows, though. No one looks at the stars. Gone ahead and turned in my port reports. I thought I had a bunch, but I apparently only had one. Still, though, with all the money I made selling those things of honey, I've got quite a good amount. 500. I repaired my ship's hull. I was at about half health. Also, there's a new prospect here. Apparently... Titania, sort of ironically, wants verdant seeds. 
I mean, Titania is like literally built into some giant petal thing and they want seeds. Very strange, <laughs> but I would love to. And I want to see if I can sell these unseasoned hours. Oh, yeah, look at this. The Victoria Market will take them for 80 coin per unseasoned hour. I mean, it's not amazing profit, but it's definitely decent. I have three of them, I think. Yeah, I've got three of them. I bought them for about 50 something each. They sell for about 80, about a 30 profit times three. Not bad. 